so dear students welcome to my youtube channel pcm academy and today i will discuss about lagrange's mean value theorem you know myself sanjeev mullik and this is the youtube channel pcm academy where i am uh, going to uh, start a uh, course actually i have already started uh, various courses and one of the best course you can say this is the mathematical physics and the course is going on the best uh, on the syllabus of iit jam physics okay ph so now today's topic is lagrange's mean value theorem and in the last class i have discussed about the rolle's theorem okay mainly in rolle's theorem and uh, i think one or two example i have done so today i have discussed about lagrange's mean value theorem and this is the more generalized mean value theorem you know and we can reach from here to rolle's theorem so this is more generally you can say uh, with respect to rolle's theorem okay so today i will discuss about lagrange's mean value theorem now to start with lagrange's mean value theorem let us remind quickly that what is actually the what is the rolle's theorem then we will switch to mean value theorem in a, a discriminant fashion okay so let me first start with uh, what what was actually the uh, rolle's um, theorem so rolle's theorem was very interesting and i am always um, actually interested that uh, to discuss the, the things uh, from the geometrical point of view and then i will go to the definition actual definition so let me start with as usual with the geometrical uh, meaning okay so in the xy plane if i uh, draw that is x and the function that we, we have already taken that is f of x single variable case that is the f of case and two point i have chosen that is one is x is equal to a and another is x is equal to b now what was always the wrong that for a at x is equal to a and x is equal to b the function the functional value that will be f of a and another one is f of b now according to rolle's theorem this two was this two were equal okay this two are equal so if this is the f of a then f of b should be on the same line because this has same value along the y axis so it is they are at same height from the x axis okay so this is actually the f of a and you can say this point is a comma f of a and this point is b comma f of b okay b comma f of b and now rolle's theorem says that any function if there is any function like this i have discussed great detail in the previous class that if this is a if this is any function joining between the point a and p between this closed interval this is of course continuous and differentiable then if we take uh, a tangent which is parallel to x axis if we take a tangent which is parallel to x axis then it should have the point should be lies between a and b so this is the c and in mathematical language we have told that f prime c is equal to 0 always if 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 a function is going from a to b for any function f of x okay and if this is continuous it is differentiable and if f of a is equal to f of b if these two values are equal then there should be at least one value between a and b such that f prime c is equal to 0 and this means there should be at least one tangent which is parallel to x axis okay so this was the rolle's theorem now what is actually the lagrange's mean value theorem one condition in change that f of a not is equal to f of b it is not necessary now okay so that's why i am saying that the lagrange's mean value theorem is the generalized case of rolle's theorem so what i am going to do here let me change the point that is which is b comma f of b so if i take this point this function f of b instead of this point so let me take initial point is this and the final point is this so this point is f of b that is b comma f of b and now if we join if we join this line okay now what will be the uh, tangent of this or the slope of this chord actually or slope of this line you can say initially you can say what is the slope of this line and the slope of this line is always you know that is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so that is nothing but fb minus fa so what is the slope now this is not equal this is not equal. maybe equal if f of a is equal to f of b then we will switch to rolle's theorem but initially let me take that f of a not equal to f of b as i like to discuss about lagrange's mean value theorem so now if this two are unequal and if we want to know the tangent and um, we want to know the slope of this slope of this line Now what will be the slope? Slope will be nothing but f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So this is the slope. 
This is the slope f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. This is the slope of the line. Now what according to Lagrange's minimum value theorem is that now if we take a take a function between this interval a comma b and obviously obviously this function again this function is again continuous between this interval and of course differentiable also derivable also between these two interval uh, continuous uh, on the uh, within the closed interval and different uh, derivable within the open interval so now if we take that function let me this is the function let me say this is the function okay so now what will happen if we take a tangent here okay now let me take a tangent here okay so and now this point is c now this point is c so what it means actually that now the slope of this curve okay f of x so let this is my f of x now this is my f of x now what it means this diagram means that the slope of this curve that is f of x at point c that means f dash c f dash c and you can see that this slope is parallel to this that means the slope of this tangent and the slope of this chord are same you can can you see if this is this line is the chord of this curve actually and this chord is parallel to this tangent can you see and so we can say that the at point c if you talk about point c so at point c the slope of this curve the slope of this curve is f dash c at point c and this is nothing but equal to the slope of this curve so it must be equal to this and this is actually the lagrange's mean value theorem so what this lagrange's mean value theorem means that if there is a function f of x and between the of course between this interval b comma a b comma a now if number 1 the f of x the function f of x is continuous is continuous within is continuous within the closed interval a comma b and obviously derivable obviously derivable within the open interval a comma b then there must be at least one value between this point a comma b between this interval a comma b such that f dash c is equal to nothing but f b minus f a divided by b minus a and geometrically that is say that if there is a there is a curve and the slope of this curve if the slope of this curve is at any point if the slope of this curve is parallel to the slope of the chord then the slope of the curve at that point the point will must lie between a comma b between a and b so it means if if you if there is maybe there is two value of two value of this of 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 this case like if if you choose the function like this so if you choose the function like this like this then you can say here is one value here is one value okay here is one value okay here is one value so you can see so these all are parallel to this chord okay and there is lot of value between a and b so there may be more than one or two value but there should at least one value such that f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a is equal to f dc that means there is a tangent which is parallel to the chord at that point okay so if there is a function f of x and the function is differentiable within this interval function is continuous within this interval then then the slope of the function at a point that is which is a comma b is parallel to the slope of the chord that means in another words you can say that there must be one real number c between a and b okay if this function f of x is continuous within this interval this is differentiable within this interval then of course there should be at least one value between this interval c such that a prime x is equal to c is equal to fb minus fa divided by b minus a okay so this is all about lagrange's mean value theorem now let me solve some problems okay and we are not going to discuss about the proof here i am uh, i have told earlier that this is the course on mathematical physics so you are not interested about the proof of this kind of things so where the proof is needed i will tell you but where the proof is not needed i i am not interested to waste our times on that topics so we have to at last solve some problems at the end of the day you have to solve the problems in your exam 
so you have to understand the uh, you have always you have to understand the theorem with some geometrical inter interpretation with some explanation okay so you have to understand the thing and you have to apply this thing in problems okay so that's our goal always that's our goal when we we, 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 we are um, actually preparing ourselves for some competitive exam then that should be your goal okay so now let me let let us give you some example to understand okay so our first problem here a function is given f of x okay here the function f of x is given and here f of x is equal to x into x minus 1 into x minus 2 and we have to find out a value c find c such that such that a is equal to 0, b is equal to half and also this thing is given that f prime c is equal to f b minus f a divided by b minus a. Okay. So what you have to do? You have to simplify the function. Let me first uh, find the value of f of a and f of b. So you can see f of a that means f of 0, f of 0 is 0 and what is f of b that is f of half okay that is half into minus half into minus 3 by 2 okay so that will be 3 by 8 so we have f of a and f of b now what is f of x if we simplify this thing you will get x into x square minus 3x plus 2 so it will be x cube minus 3x square plus 2x so now if we take the differentiation of this function that is a prime x that will be 3x square minus 6x plus 2 Okay, now what will be f prime c? So f prime c will be 2 c square, sorry, 3 c square, 3 c square minus 6 c plus 2. Okay, so this will be our f prime c. Now if we equate, if we equate this value with, substitute this, which is given here, this is nothing but the mean value theorem, average is mean value theorem. So what it means? It means 3c square minus 6c plus 2 is equal to fb minus fa. fb minus fa means 3 by 8 minus 0 divided by b minus a that is half that will be 3 by 4. Okay. Now you can solve the problems easily. This is a quadratic equation. So 3c square minus 6c plus 2 is equal to 3 by 4. And if you solve you will get 2 value of c. I will tell you. Let me give you the value 1.1 1 .1 is 1.764 and another is and another is 0 0.236 0 0.236 so obviously this will be the answer because our interval is 0 to 0 0.5 and so this value is lie between these two points okay so this will be the answer so this is how you can apply this Lagrange's minimum value theorem with simple way now let me take another example some inequality you can prove some inequality also okay so let me give you another problem in the form of inequality by using this Lagrange's minimal theorem you can also prove some inequality okay so prove that this is our question number two prove that b minus a b minus a divided by 1 plus b square less than tan plus b less than tan inverse b minus tan inverse a less than b minus a divided by 1 plus a square and you are given that a and b lies between 0 comma 1 so it will be 0 less than a less than b less than 1 so this is the condition okay so now use Lagrange's mean value theorem you have to first predict the function okay you can see from this inequality that we have we should choose the function f of x is equal to tan inverse x Okay, this is the form of tan inverse x and this these are actually the differentiation 1 by 1 by x is 1 by 1 plus b square 1, 1 by 1 plus b square these are differentiation of tan inverse x so you can easily predict the function what should be the function so let f of x is equal to so let f of x is equal to tan inverse x and you know 
so a prime x will be 1 over 1 by x square okay so now what will be a prime c now using the lagrange's mean value theorem so using lmvt using lmvt you can find that a prime c is equal to what a b minus f a divided by b minus a now what is a prime c a prime c is 1 plus 1 by c square and what is f of b f of b will be what tan inverse b f of x is tan inverse x so tan inverse b minus tan inverse b tan inverse b okay tan inverse b minus tan inverse a divided by b minus a is equal to 1 by sorry this is this is 1 by 1 by c square is equal to this now what should be the value of c you know the value of c should be between b and a so the interval is if the interval is a comma b then c have to lies between a comma b so we have another condition so let me this is our equation one and we have another condition that a must be less than c less than b now if you simplify here then it should be one by s, one plus a square less than one plus c square less than one plus b square now if you take the reciprocal then the inequality will be changed that is greater than 1 by 1 plus c square greater than 1 by 1 plus b square now if we change the inequality again so if we change this what we get we will get 1 over 1 by b square less than 1 over 1 by c square less than 1 over 1 by a square ok so now this is the thing so now you, you, you can put the value of 1 over 1 by c square from this equation 1. Okay. So please put this value here. So now you will get the your expected answer. Okay. So now let me put this value here. So tan inverse b minus tan inverse a. So this is tan inverse b minus tan inverse a divided by b minus a. 1 over 1 by a square. And here is also 1 over 1 by b square. 1 by b square okay so now simplify this is very easy b minus it will be in this side so b square less than tan inverse b less than tan inverse e a less than b minus a by 1 plus a square okay so this will be the answer final answer uh, so this is the given you have to prove this thing okay so this is how you can solve the problems by using Lagrange's minimal theorem and I have said I'll get that by using Rolle's theorem. Okay. So now in the next class I will discuss about uh, Taylor series and McLaren's theorem. Okay. So that and the minimal theorem portion will be 